So you want to take photos of the night sky, you want to take photos of the stars, but you don't know where to start. Well, no worries. That's what we're talking about today. It's tutorial to you. Welcome back to Tutorial Tuesday, where each and every week, each and every Tuesday, we bring you a brand new, fresh photography tutorial. This week, we're talking about taking photos of the night sky. Now, we're going to get through this as fast and succinctly as possible so that you can just use these tips go out and take your photos. This is gonna take you from not knowing what to do at all to being able to get some really quite nice shots of the night sky, of the Milky Way, kind of night sky landscapes. So let's get into it. The first thing you need to think about is your location. You're obviously gonna have to pick somewhere that is pretty dark. So somewhere where there's a good dark sky area, you can get apps to check out where it's gonna be best. I use kind of Beachy Head and the South Downs around where I live, that always works pretty well. But anywhere out in the country where maybe you're away from cities, so you're not getting that kind of light pollution just filling up the sky and ruining your shot. Now the next thing you're gonna to wanna to do when you find the location you wanna shoot in, you're gonna to wanna to face south. That's gonna be the direction of the Milky Way. And that's gonna give you some really beautiful star shots especially in roughly the summer months if you're in the UK. So July is a great month to go out and get a shot of the Milky Way because it's very, very visible. Of course, you have to wait till later in the day, and by day I mean night, because of course the sun doesn't set till really late, but it is worth it. If you go out sort of midnight, 1 a.m., something like that, you're gonna get some really nice shots of the Milky Way. Now the next thing you're gonna have to think about with regards to your location, facing south, all that kind of stuff, is the moon. How much moon is gonna be out on the night you wanna go out? And when does it rise? When does it set? All that kind of stuff. Because it's gonna be a really important factor into the kind of photo you can take of the night sky and of the stars. If the moon is out and it's even just a tiny bit more than the slightest crescent of moon, you are gonna have a problem with light. It's basically gonna light up your photo a little bit like the sun and it is gonna blow out that sky in terms of being able to get the stars. So you really wanna actually check this ahead of time. How much moon is there gonna be? You know, is it gonna be a waning moon, a full moon? No moon is ideal. When's the rising time? When's the setting time? It doesn't matter if you head out, even if there's gonna be a full moon. I've done loads of star shots before where it's a full moon, but I've head out before it rises. So it rises at something like 2 a.m. And I've checked that before, I've gone out, made sure I've got my shots. And actually a moonrise is amazing to see at night as well. It looks fantastic, but that's beside the point. It's gonna take out all the stars. So you wanna make sure you're taking your photos when there's no moon in the sky, ideally, or at least just a very small amount. You can play this a little bit by ear. You know, if the moon is gonna set behind something, buildings, hills, whatever it is, that's not really gonna make too much of an issue for you when you're taking your photos. So you can actually go around taking your photos if the moon's behind something, that's fine. But you do wanna check all this ahead of time because otherwise, and I've done this, you get very disappointed when you realize I'm not gonna get any star shots. I've gone out at 1 a.m. for nothing. So let's talk about actual settings and how you wanna set the camera up. So you've gone out, you've got your location, you're ready, it's dark, you've got all your stuff. First of all, you're gonna want a tripod. Absolutely, this is the case because you're going to use a longer exposure. That means you're gonna leave the camera to actually expose the shot for five, 10, 15, 20 seconds. So you're going to want a tripod to make sure that the camera's not gonna shake in your hands, even just the tiniest bit while the photo is being taken, because that's gonna end up with a nice blurry photo, which you don't want. So you're gonna want a tripod to keep that nice and stable and steady, so you get a nice sharp photo. Next, you wanna think about what kind of lens you want to use. Generally, a wide angle lens is gonna work really well because you can get more of the shot in, and generally, and we'll get into this in a minute, it'll let you expose the shot for a longer amount of time without having any issues. So something like a 14 millimeter, 16 millimeter, I use a 20 millimeter sometimes, 24 millimeter. You can go to something like 35 or even 50 millimeter if you want, but you are going to have to reduce the amount of time that you can expose that photo. And that brings us on really nicely to settings. Now, in terms of aperture, you're going to want to use the fastest aperture available to you. And generally that means using a wide angle prime lens, some kind of prime lens where you've got f1.8, f1.4 is great as well, but you know, whatever the fastest aperture that's available to you, which is the lower f-stop number, that's what you wanna use. You wanna set it to that to let as much light in as possible. Now, in terms of shutter speed, generally we use the 500 rule, or some people like to use the 400 rule. But what this means is you take 500 or 400, and you divide it by the focal length 
that you're using. So for example, let's say you're using a 20 millimeter lens. You would take 500, divide it by 20, which is 25, and that's the number of seconds that you can expose the shot for before you get any issues with kind of smearing. So in this case, that'd be 25 seconds. Now, what I like to do is actually either use the 400 rule just to be just to be extra sure that I'm gonna get nice sharp photos and no kind of smearing. I'll talk about what smearing is in a second. But otherwise, you could use the 500 rule and just bring it down a little bit. So 25 seconds, I'd probably take that to 20 just to be safe. So I mentioned smearing. What exactly is that and why is it a problem? Well, when you take the photo with a long exposure, the longer you expose it for, the more the stars are going to move in the sky. I suppose technically the Earth is rotating and that's why it looks like they're moving, but essentially the stars are moving in the sky. And if you expose for too long, they will actually move across the sky enough to create a little kind of line or a smear as if they're moving across the photo. Now, generally that means you're gonna have not to pin sharp stars. They're not gonna look super great. That's why we use the 500 rule. And generally I tend to move towards the 400 rules, which is exactly the same, 400 divided by the focal length, giving you your exposure time. We need to talk about focusing because you probably are not gonna be able to autofocus on the stars, sadly. Now you wanna bump up your ISO, you wanna pop your lens into manual focus. And if you have got the magnification option on your camera, where you can actually help with the manual focusing, you wanna pop that on as well. What you wanna do is look at a bright star so that you can actually see it on your screen, even if it's crazy grainy because you've bumped up that ISO so much, you wanna find a nice bright star, have it on your screen, and you want to actually use that manual focus wheel to get that star to the smallest possible point that you can get it to. That's gonna be when they're the most in focus that you can get them. And once you've got that set up, we need to talk about ISO. Now, this is gonna be a bit of trial and error. 1600 works well. I, I use 1600 a lot, but if you can bump it up without too much grain, I would, you wanna get as much light and the sensor to be as sensitive to light as possible without too much noise. So somewhere between 2000 and 3200, I think works really well. You can experiment with 6400 and even up from there if you want to, but I find that around 1600 to 3200 is the sweet spot for me. That's gonna let enough light in, the sensor's gonna be sensitive enough to light to get a good shot without introducing too much noise. Now, something else that's very important is to shoot in RAW because it's gonna allow you the most flexibility when it comes to editing. You can pull back some of the highlights, you can pull back some shadow if you want to, you can actually play around the exposure, and of course, white balance as well. Now, if you leave your camera on auto white balance, you're absolutely going to get some kind of crazy colors in the sky. I've done this loads of times. It can look very, very cool, it can look very, very nice but it's not necessarily what you want. So if you shoot in RAW, you can adjust this after the fact. Otherwise you could set your white balance to something pretty neutral, like 4,000, 4,500, something like that's gonna work probably really well in terms of just having a neutral white balance. And you can play around with it a little bit in post as long as you shoot in RAW. Now, when you actually go to take the shot, it can be a good idea to pop on a two second or a five second timer so that when you actually press the shutter, you're introducing no shake at all because there's a timer between pressing it and then the camera actually taking a shot. That's what I tend to do just to eliminate the chance of any shake. And it's not like you'd need to take it in the moment kind of thing. So I think that that works really well. It just eliminates the chance of any additional, even micro shake, which might cause a little bit of blurriness. And that's it. That's the beginner's guide to taking these nice guy shots, to getting some beautiful Milky Way shots and just getting some lovely, lovely stuff. A lot of this is trial and error. A lot of this is experimentation, but it's super fun, especially because the first time you go out and do this, it is gonna blow your mind what you're gonna get on the back of that camera because it's gonna look so different to what you're seeing with a naked eye. And it can be a really, really fun experience. Now, if you have any questions, pop them down in the comments, of course. You can like and subscribe to really help me out. And of course, see new stuff all the time. There's loads of stuff all the time, reviews and tutorials and all kinds of stuff. I will, of course, see you in the next video. And as always, thanks for watching.